Hey, welcome in a fam. We're talking today about friendship with the Holy Spirit. And I think friendship with the Holy Spirit uh, breeds intimacy. And I'm here with Brother King. Hi. <laughs> We're just excited, man. And I'm so glad to just be able to uh, fellowship and just talk to you about this and just have a conversation. I think um, having intimacy, friendship, and connection with the Holy Spirit is so important in these in these days right now, last days of what people talk about. And I'm really big on it because one, I can you can you can preach like a, a fire message or teach a fire message or have a fire prayer. And then right after, and I'm going right into it, right after, you might be led by your soul, your own will, your emotions, your your flesh. And it's like, how do we stay in constant covenant with God, constant covenant with the Holy Spirit? And I just think the Holy Spirit is gonna flow through it because yeah, it does take a level of surrender. It takes a level of um, yielding to the Holy Spirit. And I guess that's kind of our, our topic today. So I'm excited, man. You Let's open up. I know we have some scriptures or you want to kind of open up and just share a few things as we get into it. Um, yeah, um, uh, we, can, we can open up like John 14. If you can cool. go there. Just let me know when you're there. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, and... Let's t- just to start at verse 15, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the, tru- the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. So right here we just see Jesus promising, it is the promise of the Holy Spirit right here. We, we get truth about him. Like we, we get insight about him from Jesus directly right here. And we, we know that he will abide with us forever. Mm. He's going to abide with us on the earth until the, the end of the age. And of course, it says the, the world can't receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But it says that we know him because he dwells within us. Mm. So something that I really want to share about this is um, a key I want to share is uh, we got to receive Jesus. Like if we don't, if we're not born again, mm-hmm. we haven't received Jesus. Like that's the first step. We gotta, we gotta get there first. Yeah, yeah. Receiving Jesus, like when I when I think about it, because people always say like, hey, you, you got to receive Jesus. Like, what does that look like to to the believer, right? Like to receive Jesus, because I believe people have. They're like, well, I confess Jesus. Like, I'm just confessing, I'm confessing, but I think, I personally believe there's something a little bit more to receiving him. I think it could be, there's this level of like, if you've really received him in your heart, there should be some sort of transformation, change, desire shift, right? Just, and that's what Jesus does. He changes us from the inside out, not the outside in. So any examples you have on like, or things you want to share, like receiving Jesus, like what does it look like to receive Jesus? So when we receive Jesus or as in we are saved, we are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit and the reason why your desires change uh, is because you have received the Holy Spirit. That's a, a, a clear sign that you may have the Holy Spirit is if, if your desires have changed, if you... Mm-hmm desire new things if you do not desire to do things that please your flesh that Mm -hmm. are sinful in nature that rebel against god if you have a desire not to do those things galatians 5 17 tells us that the the spirit gives us desires that are just the opposite of what the sinful nature desires Mm. so if you are if you start receiving that that's a clear sign and if you don't have the spirit of christ right you don't belong to him, mm. is what the word says. Mm-hmm. So when you receive him, you will change. There will be transformation. Now, you have to act on it. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit doesn't force you to do anything. He will give you the desires, but you have to walk out what he gives in places in you. Mm. And I think that's where we get the clear distinction of, oh, I believe in Jesus. Or, yeah, you can believe in Jesus, but... If he, ha- if you have his spirit in you, and you're not surrendering, and you're not yielding to what he's, what he's placing in you, then it's you're not really producing any fruit. There's nothing. It, it's not beneficial to you. You might as well just say, "Well, I don't really believe because you're not producing anything. Your faith is not. Wor- your faith. There's no evidence of it." Mm, wow, bro, it, it's so crazy because um, kind of just thinking about what you're sharing, it's like 
you have to act on it because people think it's just going to be this thing that's going to like push them. And there's, there's also people that think about it. They're like, well, this seems a little forceful, right? And I think something that you pointed out was when you have the spirit of God, it gives you total opposite desires of what the flesh is. So this like separating and knowing the difference between what the flesh and the Holy Spirit is, is so key and it's so needed. But I think I heard that from you where you said, you can't just, what, what I heard is you, 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 it can't be passive. You have to act on it and you have to be willing. Let's go a little bit deeper on that. How do you decide to go active? Say, I, I'm willing. Like I know because here's, I always get this like where people are always asking like, how do I just, I just want to surrender to God, but just how do I do that? What does that even look like? Because a lot of people, they desire God, they love God to that point where they want change, but then the change is what's hard. Anything you want to share on like how to get somebody to like say, I, I'm deciding to actively pursue God. Any examples you have on that? Um, well, I would I would give Paul as an example. Paul, right in Acts chapter nine, right on the road to Damascus, he gets knocked off. You know, he sees a vision of Jesus and he's speaking to him, and Jesus gives him a word, but Paul has to act on the word that he was given. Mm. He has to choose. I, you can't get a special prayer prayed over you to want to read the Bible more. You can't have a special prayer prayed over you to make you go to church more, to desire things. You have to actively choose to act. Like You have to make a decision. It's, there's no one who's going to be able to make that decision for you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you have to say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be dedicated to this. And as you continue to do it, you are yielding. You are saying, instead of doing what I desire, I'm doing with the spirit desires and I'm going to keep flowing. There's a flowing with it. You don't just force it and like, well, I have to make this happen. I have to start reading my Bible more. I have mm -hmm. to. Even if you just read like one chapter a day and you just slowly begin to build, it's a, it's a dedication and saying that I'm going to make the choice mm -hmm. to do this. Because no one else is going to make the choice for you. There's no method to like, hey, this is how you, you just have to surrender. You just literally have to say, okay, I trust you, God, mm -hmm. enough that I'm just going to do what you told me to do, mm -hmm. what's in this Bible. And as I continue to walk in it, wow. then I will continue to grow in you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You have to make the choice to draw near to him. And in his response, he draws near to you, and then he begins to work on you, right? The Holy Spirit does what you can't do for yourself. Mm. We see like also in Galatians 5, verses 20 through 23, the fruit of the Spirit. You, in your own flesh, there's a difference between the works of the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, the, the verses previous to that, 5, 19 through 21. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are in you, but... This is what you produce out of your own self. The spirit produces those things in 22 to 23, the verses. Those are things that you in it of your own power are not able to produce. And he does it for you. Now, I don't want to say that, oh, just be lazy. Just, just let the Holy Spirit do everything. No, you have to allow him to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to surrender and say, okay, God, in this situation that I'm in, let me just sit back and just give you an opportunity to, to speak to me or give you an opportunity to guide me as to how I can go through this. Because we, we could just yell at somebody and just get mad at somebody. But what if we just pause for a second and just said, hold on. Holy Spirit, what should I say? How should I react? Hmm. Let me just take a moment to pause and just, that's a moment of surrender. Because you're saying, I'm just going to go back and just say, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? Wow. Wow. I think one thing that I'm getting from what you were just sharing is 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 trust. trust. Because a lot yeah. of people say, I trust God, but inwardly they trust themselves. Inwardly they'll trust their uh, bank account or they'll trust their employer, right? Or they'll trust uh, their, their marriage or the relationships around them. But like now we have to audit what have we made an idol? Because what I'm seeing is like, yes, we have to yield, get guided. You talked about uh, Apostle Paul 
And like in that moment, it was like, yeah, he got into this point where it's like, I'm either giving my life to Christ or I'm, I'm following Christ and I'm seeing this sign of an encounter that I have with Jesus as like, man, he is the, the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's, he's the King of Kings, or I'm just going to ignore it and then go back and trusting myself and my own religion and my religious background and everything I've had. And I, I love what you're sharing is the, the flowing, the Holy Spirit flows, the flesh will force. But I, 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 what I'm hearing and what I heard from what you were just sharing is, is do you really trust God? Do you really, really trust God? And there, there's going to be people that are saying, well, how do I know this is from God then? Because I, I, I desire to follow God. I desire to trust God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really going in deep because I know we're talking about intimacy and friendship with the Holy Spirit. But these are the roadblocks that I believe hinder people from having a real relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. And one thing I heard from you is, is, is trust. So how do I break off these idols? Yeah, uh, there, there's something I wanna like, I wanna like backtrack a little and then go into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So there's of course truths that we just read, right? The spirit always is abiding with you. He was joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He is one with your spirit. He's with you always, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Psalm 139 verse seven is like, where can I go from your parent? Where can I flee from your presence? Mm. No matter where you go, he's there. Mm. And we have to accept this truth. The main problem that a lot of people have is that they're trusting in their own works to work up a relationship with God when that's not how it works. That's legalism. Mm. You, as if there is some special prayer that you can pray. There's a, there's, if you just hit this certain note when you're worshiping, if you just sing it loud enough, if you just pray for this many hours and you follow <laughs> this religious doctrine and this religious rhetoric, that somehow you're going to work up a relationship with God. You are not operating in faith. You are operating in the flesh. That might be stepping on toes, but you're operating in the flesh because if it was based upon your righteousness, no one would have a relationship with God. Hmm. It, all things that we receive from God that are spiritual is because of the blood of Jesus, and that's it. Woo. Not because of your righteousness. That's, you, you can't work up a relationship with him, and he's a gift, not a reward. Right? <laughs> Acts 2.38, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, hmm. remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's, he's a gift. It's not like a, I have to work up. And that's how people view everything in uh, pertinence to the spirit. Spiritual gifts, relationship with the spirit, the presence of God. As if you can do anything to make God encounter you, you can't. He's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. We have to break the mindset that we're earning. You, you, you can't earn. You can't earn. That's why a lot of people are ashamed to approach God because, well, I did this wrong. And I and 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 so I do, I'm not worthy to 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 go and be in the secret place with the Lord. But in 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 all reality, it's like none of us are really worthy. Mm. It's because of the blood of Jesus, right? That's that is essentially denying the power of the cross because you're putting your trust in yourself in your own work, righteous works. Wow, that's legalism. Wow, we have to take a step back and say, hey, the blood of Jesus is the reason why we're able to have this connection. Mm. It, you know, we, we read in the word, right? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. These are gifts from God. You have God's grace even though you didn't earn it. You have God's love because you did, not because you earned it, because he loves you unconditionally. Mm -hmm. You have the communion of, it's not communion with, it's not friendship with, it's not fellowship with, it's of, meaning that he is the one who gives it to you. He's present with you because of what Jesus did at the cross and not because mm -hmm. of what you do. Wow. If we don't get past the, I have to be so righteous and I have to, if I just pray enough and if I fast twice a month and if I if I go to church to every service, then maybe God will encounter me. Maybe God will draw closer to me. That's not, that's not what the word says. You have to believe the word even when you don't feel anything. <laughs> you got to believe. The word of God is still 
working it's still active it's living and powerful even when you don't feel nothing well well maybe you feel like god maybe for has forsaken you or he's left you because because you just don't feel anything you don't hear anything you're not seeing anything you're not seeing any change it's like it's like there's just like i'm asking god for something and i haven't seen anything happen i'm asking god for his presence and i'm not experiencing this tangible feeling i'm asking for all of these things and you're like well because none of this has happened then god has forsaken me that's that's the flesh mm. you're not operating in faith you need to repent you need to change your mind because it's not about your righteousness, one, because that's that's a telltale sign. Like you're, you're you're thinking about yourself because it's like maybe I did something wrong, or no. The word of God is always true. It says that He will never leave you. He will abide with you forever. He's joined with you. He's with you to the end of the age. Don't believe the lie that you're doing things by mm -hmm. yourself for your no. He's with you all the time. The word of God is not made null and void because you don't experience something, because you don't feel something. The word of God is over our feelings. We look at things through the perspective of the word of God, not the word of God through our perspective. That's good. That is so good. Bro, that's a bar right there. Like, uh, even if you don't feel anything. <laughs> i think i think that's so big it's like even though you don't feel anything god's word is still truth jesus is still sitting on the throne so what i'm, I'm getting from everything you shared because everything you just shared that's powerful i believe that no matter what's going on no matter what it looks like i have to lean and trust god's word and his promises but it's hard to trust god's word or believe in god's word when i don't really know god's word because and something you were sharing is like you have to see it. Everything we believe, everything we do is through the lens of God, through the lens of his word. And what we need to respond, because I don't like the word react, because when we react, I believe that's more emotional. But we have to strategically respond to adversity, to thoughts that come in through his word as that lens, that, that filter. I'm seeing it as like a filter now. Like I need so much of his word inside of me that when I do get squeezed or when something happens, the only way I, the only thing that I respond from is through his word. His word is the only thing that comes out of me. And I, I believe we're, we're getting somewhere here because this is something that a lot of people deal with or struggle with. And even myself, like I'll go through seasons where I'm like, Lord, I, I feel I'm so faithful and I know so much of your word. And again, it goes back to this thought process that might try to attack us. Where we're like, um, well, I earned, right? I, I earned the reward I earned the blessing because of what I did or what I consistently do. But with with the Lord, it's like, man, you you remember Romans eight twenty eight? All things work together, no matter what it looks like. We don't praise God because of our circumstance. We praise God because of who He is. We don't praise God because we're at the top of the mountains. We praise God because of who He is. We don't praise God, or it's harder to praise God when you're at your valley season. We praise God no matter what season we're in because of who he is and i think this is where we're kind of getting because no matter what lord i'm always going to trust you i'm always going to believe that you hold all the power you get all the glory and i think this is the that that stepping stone into real fellowship and a word you're you're sharing through the scriptures is real communion with the holy spirit and i believe if people can just get this first step not coming in this complaining mindset or ungrateful or like, but Lord, I've been in church for 20 years, right? I've been in church for 20 years. And you, you were saying like, there's no amount of prayer to pray, to get somebody to consistently be in church. It's like you can pray for them to get into the house of the Lord. But I, I know what you meant. You meant, you were sharing how we can keep praying for you. We can keep praying for God to bless you and God sending you seed but you keep eating the seed, you're not planting the seed. So there's this level of like, I need biblical discernment and spiritual maturity to know that I don't eat seeds, I plant seeds. Because we can, as a church, as friends, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we can pray, we can intercede. But if God is sending seed and you're not planting it, that's up to you. That's between you and the Lord. We can keep praying for you to come to church, but you come to church with uh, an ungrateful heart or like, I've heard that worship song before, or I know this verse, like they always share this verse at church. It's like, it, it, it's not a, it, it's a heart posture. There's a heart issue there. 
And it's hard for God to work when there's pride, there's self-righteousness, there's re any sort of rebelliousness. So I, I think we're just getting somewhere with like what it truly means to get into real fellowship, real friendship with the Holy Spirit. Because once I can cleanse my heart, I mean, you see David, right? Purify me, oh God, right? Cleanse my heart. And it's just like those types of prayers to say, God, can you just, just, just cleanse me? Remove things that come against you. Remove things that um, might go against your Holy Spirit that is trying to work in me because I know they're warring. I know they're constantly warring against one another moment by moment. And it's like, Lord, I'm really just trying to surrender. And I think a lot of people, they, they deal with that. So I really wanted this to like minister. And I, I'm really feeling the flow of the Holy Spirit just ministering around that surrender, around unlocking that that next season and i know it started it started with the trust like do you really trust in god like yeah we're receiving jesus but can you can you continue to trust him because it's one to receive and john 15 talks about it, it's another to remain and that remain comes in being able to abide right I, i'm sure there's a lot of things flowing through you anything off that yeah just that 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 could be like a whole. <laughs> you just go off something. Else. I get it. But like, yeah, just remaining in Him is just. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just, you, but the word speaks for itself. <laughs> amen. 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 I know we talked about receive. So today we're talking about like different keys, yeah. right? And yes, I know sometimes I'm trying to like, okay, Lord, like a Holy Spirit. I know you're trying to move. But there's like so many different angles and I want to, yeah. I always want to stay on topic, y'all. Like yeah. I, that's, that's always the goal. And, and thank you for sharing that because it's, it's true. Like we're, we, we could hit one point and then it's like, yeah, you receive Jesus. Cause that's where you get, but you got to remain. And I believe that remain word is still part of obviously what we're talking about. But then again, it's like, we, we can go on a whole different realm when we talk mm -hmm. about that. I want to stay on these keys. So today we're talking about like these, these seven keys, right? Mm -hmm. Seven keys around uh, being able to have friendship with the Holy Spirit, to stay intimate, to have communion with Him. So I know, mm -hmm. number one, we talked about that receiving Jesus, mm -hmm. and I believe our the receiving is building that trust. And then, where, where are we at right now? Is it? Uh, yeah, we're on the second one, so. Cool, let's go, let's go number two. Yeah, so number two is acknowledge that He is a person and treat Him as such. So, the Holy Spirit is a person. According to the Word of God, the language that's used around the Holy Spirit, the diction that we see there, it insinuates that He is a person. He is not a force or an object or a feeling or the wind, the fire. Like these are representations of Him. Like He has mm -hmm. manifested Himself in these ways, but in and of itself, that's not who He is. He is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, who is. Who is there in the beginning in Genesis 1 verse 2, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters, Amen. right? He's a person, right? He can be lied to. We see Ananias, right, and Sapphira there. They lie to the Holy Spirit, and you see what happens from that. You can't lie to a force or... Like, if you're talking to, like, gravity outside, and you lie to gravity, like, you can't even lie to gravity. It can't even understand what you're talking about. <laughs> like, he's, he's, a, he's a person, right? And he, he gives directions to, to, to us as uh, God's people, as we are sons of God through, through Jesus, right? He, he's, a, he's a person. He speaks. He has feelings. Amen. He's able to experience emotions. He is able to, he has a will. So th th these are signs that he is a person. And if he's a person, I remember hearing this so many times. He's a person. He's a person. He's a person. But it just never like clicked that way. It was just like, yeah, I understand that. But then there was just one time when I heard someone say it and it just like clicked for me and it like weighed heavy on my soul. Like I was like, like sorrow because I was like, I just realized that if he's truly a person, then I've grieved him because I've done things that are not pleasing in his sight. Wow. And it was just like a conviction, like, wow, he's a person. And the things that I do don't just affect me. It affects him because he dwells within me. Yeah. If so I'm good. like operating out of the flesh, if I'm operating out of things that are not of God, he's partake. It's like you're, you're dragging him along with you. Like, you know, you have them friends where it's like, I'm not trying to go where they go. <laughs> they be doing crazy stuff. But like, you're dragging him along with you in your dysfunction in your 
in your rebelliousness against God, and that's grieving. You're mm. grieving him. You have to understand, like, if someone is is a friend, if you're a friend of someone, and you and there's something that you know, like in the Word of God, we know what God does not like. He hates lying. He hates sin of That's all good. kinds, sexual immorality. He hates all of these things. If we're doing things and we know that He does not like them, we're not being good friends. We're not friends. Wow. We're not acting as if we're friends. We're acting as if, well. We're just stuck with him. He's he's just he's just a, we're Christians, so we gotta have the Holy Spirit. He's just he just gotta tag along with us. <laughs> Instead of us like we have to be conscious, like that's what we're doing. We're just like, well, Holy Spirit, well, I know that you're you know you're God and everything, but let me just go, let me just go do this real quick. <laughs> Let's just ignore. No, we can't do that. Wow. We gotta be. We have to be like surrendered to the point where it's like, hey, the Holy Spirit is a person, and we have to understand that He has a heart. Just like us, if someone we know, like, and we love does something to hurt us, we be all in our feelings. We be like, you know, we be crying, we be complaining, we do whatever mm. we want to do. But think about God. What about his feelings? Well, wow. if you read Micah chapter six, I believe God literally asked the children of Israel, what did I do to deserve this treatment? What did I do? And when I read that, I was like crying because I was like, dude, that's, that's, that's deep. Cause you can see God, He feels. Yeah. He's not just like a you know, He's just a big guy up in the sky. Like no, He feels things. He's a per- we were made in His image. Amen. So it, it, we really gotta like go back to that. Is like He's a person. He has feelings. We can't just be you know just operating any type of way, but be conscious that hey, whatever I do, I'm the Holy Spirit is within me. This is His temple, right? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. What are you doing with His hands? What are you looking at with his eyes? What are you saying with his mouth? What are you putting in? What, what are you listening to? What are you? What is in your heart? What are you meditating on? Where are you going? What places are you going with his body? What are you doing? Are you being a good steward of his body? Are you destroying his temple? We got to really think about these things and be and be conscious because otherwise we're just going to continue to operate in flesh. If you if you continuously operate in flesh and go through cycle after cycle after cycle, you need to renew your mind and think about the consequences of your decision, not just cuz you're going to have to reap what you sow, mm. but because the spirit is affected by everything you do because he sees. He's with you. He's in you in everything that you do. Amen. Hey man, I'm not touching that. Go, go to number three, bro. <laughs> that, that. That, that go was, to the next one. <laughs> no, that was good. I, I'm going to just say, I'm going to just sit at that. That was a great point. And I really felt the Holy Spirit flowing through that. And I, I agree. I agree. He is a person, not a feeling, not any emotion. It, it, it he is a person. Hey Amen. It is a person. He is a person. I'm always looking at that. I'm like, same, same, but different. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I just say, because like. When I got that revelation, it was like that wording is what made it change for me. That's why I just like saying he. Yeah. So if I say it, then it sounds like, well, you know, it might not click for some people. So I agree. I, say like I agree with that. Um, so number three, acknowledge that he's already with you. Yeah. Again, like some people just think that God is just like this, just the, the big guy in the sky, right? He's just floating <laughs> off in the third heaven and... You're never gonna. You're not gonna see him until you die. He's just. He's just there, and you just. You're just down here, and you're looking up, and you're trying to beg him to hear you when he's literally right there with you, through it all. Like we have to acknowledge, because sometimes we go through things, and it feels like we're alone, and there's self condemnation, and there's all these things that flow through our head. But you have to realize, like he's with you, and he's present with you through every situation. Like me. Public speaking is not like that. Never been me. I don't mm. like people looking at me. I don't like people, you know, just <laughs> like I got a whole audience looking at. Like I never liked that. But there's been many situations where I had to go preach the word of God, mm-hmm. and I had to stand in front of people, and yeah. I was nervous. I I still get nervous to this day before I go like talk to people before I go evangelize whatever I go and do. I still get nervous. Yeah. But it's I always just sit there and I wait and I pray and I say, Holy Spirit, I know that you're here with me. Lord, be with me. Lord, guide me. Lord, direct me. Holy Spirit, just have your way. I surrender to you. It's really yeah. just that simple. Just, just, yeah. just acknowledge that He's there. There's your perspective on many things would change if you just acknowledge that God is present with you in every situation. If you just think on that instead of like, well, I'm so lonely. Like I just saw this thing where people were like, um, 
because they're a certain age and they haven't been in a relationship yet or they're not married or Mm -hmm. they don't have kids or whatever the case may be, they're like, well, I'm alone, so I just want to die, basically. Like, I just don't want to be here no more. Mm. But if you really, like, had a revelation of, like, you have the Spirit of God that's with you, that's present with you at every moment, and He loves you, and He loves you with the... You don't even... You probably can't even comprehend... You can't. You can't comprehend how much He loves you. Yeah. You can only see through the Word of God, like, hey, He loves you with an everlasting love. Like, I can give you a testimony on just me. Early stages of Christianity, like, self-hatred and self-condemnation were just, Mm. like, so big that I couldn't get past it. Like, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't share the gospel. I couldn't, you know, use my gifts the way that God wanted me to use them because I was just like, God, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to do anything because... I just feel like I hate myself. Like, I just can't Mm. do this. But in those situations, like, I just, I did treat God as a person. I would always sit there and just sit there and just wait and just be like, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say about this? Like, what do you have to say? Because I know that I'm not supposed to hate myself. You're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you hate yourself, you don't love your neighbor. (laughs) But I would just be sitting there and just be like, I I would just be sitting there beating myself up. But I would stop and say, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say? And sometimes he wouldn't say anything, but there were some times where he did speak. And he just would say, he just said, I love you. Even though I was like, Lord, rebuke me. Tell me what I did wrong. Let me know what to do right. And, he, and give me instructions for this and that. And he would just say, I love you. And I'd just be crying and I'd just be like, Lord. <laughs> you know? yeah. Because I want, like, sometimes like he speaks not what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. Yes. And he's there to comfort you. He's the comforter. He's, he's there to comfort you. Anything you want to share on that? Yeah, I think uh, a few verses. Uh, he'll never leave you nor forsake you, right? And then uh, he's a present help in a time of trouble. So yeah. just some things on that was that, you know, you talked about the whole like even relationship thing, whether you're alone but never compare or never a mislabel being alone mm-hmm. with loneliness. And yeah. I think that's just something that people need to understand that when you're sometimes when you're alone, in a single season, just embrace it and just know God has a purpose for it. And maybe it's it's separation and sanctification. So yeah, just some things I wanna highlight that he is with us. And um, something I like what you shared was acknowledge that he is with you. If I can just acknowledge that God is with me and if he is for me, who can be against me? I believe you'll just move different. You'll think different. You'll respond different. So yeah, I, I, I totally agree and powerful testimony. Just a powerful testimony, bro. Yeah. yeah. Number four. Number four. Anything you want to share on number four? Um, so number four is believe the word even when you don't feel anything. So there's this common thing that I, I see it all the time. I hear people say it all the time. Like, well, I can't feel, I haven't felt God's presence or I haven't been feeling God's presence after this event transpired or because I've been operating in sin and I've been walking according to the flesh, I feel like God is no longer with me. There's a disconnect because I can't sense his presence anymore. I don't feel his tangible touch, which his like he can manifest himself in a tangible way. We see it in Exodus 40. We see it in Second Chronicles chapter 5 and chapter 7. It's a clear, it's a reality in scripture that yes, he can in a tangible way that you are aware of can manifest himself to you. But when we operate in that mindset, it's that's when we begin to say like, oh yeah, God's left me. When I don't feel something, oh, he left me. Or he's not showing himself that I do something wrong. And then there's self-condemnation. And, mm. and that's where that begins to be bred when we really have to believe the word of God over our circumstance, over what we yeah. think is happening. God might just not be present like he's present with you as in he is abiding with you in that situation but Mm -hmm. he's trying to teach you something Mm -hmm. like if we look at job's story it tells us that god heard job the very first day he prayed to him but job didn't hear anything from the lord until after his whole situation where he he lost everything (laughs) there was a season of silence where god didn't say anything like we have the the days in the book of judges right like there wasn't that many words coming from the lord there was Mm. it was like we had judges over the land but there was there was prophets but it wasn't as like how we see in david's day where there's more prophets throughout the land Mm -hmm. 
So there's just seasons where God may speak more or speak less. He may mm. reveal himself to you one way in one season because that's what you needed at that time. But now that you're growing and you're developing, he might not need to encounter you that same way because you should know by now by faith that he is with you. Like, I feel like God, he does things sometimes so that he can stir up faith but even though he stirs up faith, you have to maintain faith. You can't just be like, I believe one day, but then my situation weighs me down another day and I just don't believe anymore. Well, of course, we have times of weakness, but at the end of the day, it's like we have to. This is you can't emphasize this enough. You have to read. You have to know and you have to believe the word of God. If you don't. You're always going to be dealing with thoughts of self-condemnation, of mm -hmm. God has left you, of we're, we're never going to get out of this. And, and, and you know, God just he decided, you know, the Holy Spirit just left because I did this and I did that. No, that's not what the Word of God says. You have to believe the Word of God over your circumstance. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh, so big on, on just being able to, no matter what's taking place, know that you, you kind of did a two-part to this. God does manifest himself physically, tangibly, and it, it is all throughout scripture, but he doesn't always manifest the same way that we might expect it in this season, in the next season. And I'll always give the example how on Mount Carmel, Elijah, it came like a pillar of fire. In the next season, he checked the wind. God wasn't in the wind. Earthquake, he wasn't in the earthquake. Fire, God wasn't in the fire, but he kept pressing in and he became a different uh, encounter, which was what a still small voice so I just think knowing that we can just always stay, I don't, there's a saying like, don't be rigid and don't just put, don't put God in a box. And I think that's the thinking that we have is like, well, that's how God did it. That's how we always, like, we can't even conceive fully the things of God to its extent. The mind will never fully understand it. And if we could just, again, like you said, read believe receive pray just meditate on it watch god move and even if he doesn't do anything or something that we expect him to do i think there's a level there's a this difference between like expectation and like submission because i expect this to happen and it doesn't happen but if i'm submitted to god whatever happens through that god i trust you no matter the circumstance and there is a, a point where we just got to audit our heart I think we have to like just know like, okay, am I starting to tell God what to do? Because there's a saying where you don't get to tell God how to uh, how to do things in your life. He tells us what to do. Amen. Right? Like we didn't choose him; he chose us. So as long as we can operate from that, we'll we will we'll, it'll be less likely for us to allow our feelings to be over our faith in Christ. And then like you said, it's one to say you have faith, it's another to maintain faith. And I think that's why Hebrews says, now faith. Because if you're operating or moving, it's like not not my faith, Pat, like last week or yesterday, it's like, do you have faith now? And if you can just stick on that path, it'll continue to go from one thing to another, one good decision, and then they just stack. I think, I think life is made out of uh, decisions, right? Our decisions shape our destiny. And God wants us to make better decisions. And our decision shouldn't just be off, a, again, a feeling. It should be off a, um, off an encounter with God. And if that's a real encounter, you really hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm moving. And testing that, again, against Scripture. Testing everything I hear against Scripture. So, yeah, just some good stuff on that. I, I really like that point. On He's not, what, what's, what's the, how do you word the point again? Um... They believe the word even when you don't feel anything. That's it. Yeah. So just believing it even though you don't feel anything. And I think that's that saying like faith over feelings. You know, it's it sounds so so uh <laughs> so cliche, but it, it's true. Like my faith in Christ over the feeling that I have in this present moment. And then it goes back to that that one scripture in Romans it Romans, uh the the present time of our suffering doesn't compare to the glory of what God has uh for us and I don't know if that's the exact wording, but it's saying like the future of what God has for us doesn't compare to the, the present suffering we're in right yeah. now. Yeah. Amen, bro. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Um, the next one, number five, is 
Don't be legalistic in your approach. I feel like a lot of people like come to God in this very religious way. Well, maybe if I just have to posture this this very specific way, and if I don't if I don't do it this way, well then God's not gonna He's not gonna listen to me, and He doesn't want to spend time with me, and whatever it is. Or like I said, like they believe their feelings over their faith, or it's like a I have to do a certain. Like this this checklist Christianity where I have to read the Bible this many times a day, this many hours a day, and I have to work up a relationship with God when that's not how it works. You don't even work up a relationship with other people. You do it just by spending time with one another, by talking to one another, by wow. learning about each other. You don't sit there and just be like, well, I have to earn the right to be your friend. No. You can't earn the right to be God's friend because, like I said, again, blood of Jesus, all things that you receive spiritually is because of the blood of Jesus is not because of your own righteousness. Yeah. I feel like somebody needs to hear that right now. It's not because of your own righteousness. It's because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And, and we just have to really like just accept that and, and, and not get so legalistic. Well, well, this per well, I hadn't, I haven't attended church in this many weeks or this many days and so i just can't go before god and i just can't go and talk to him and no that's not how that works even in the garden right when when adam and eve sinned against god and they hid themselves from god god covered them Amen. he didn't yeah. say he didn't he didn't say just go and hide from god because god gonna find you anyways <laughs> you better not hide from him because he he know what you did he saw you in 4k <laughs> just don't don't run away from him he's he knows exactly what you did go to him and be like hey you are my father, right? You are, you are my my friend. Let me just come to you, and let, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just come be real with you, cause you can't hide from him. You can't hide nothing from him. He knows everything mm -hmm. you did. Yeah. And I feel like if we just like try to get past that point of it, just like, well, you know, I remember what I just did Tuesday night. You know, I don't know if I should go in the prayer closet today. You know, that's not no. Don't be like like it's a righteous. It's a how much how religious you are how christian you are how saved you are it's not about that it's really just about you surrendering to him acknowledging his presence and just fellowshipping with him it's it's very it's very simple yeah yeah i love that we can go so much about like the legalistic spirit or just like legalism in general and the religious spirit i mean we just talk a lot about the pharisees you know and i i just just to keep it simple religion tries to change you from the outside in. Relationship with God changes you first inside, then out. Religion is saying uh, you made a mistake or you're a mistake. That's religion. You're a mistake. It's condemnation, right? Holy Spirit conviction and relationships like, hey, you made a mistake, but here's how I can fix it. So if you guys can discern the difference between these, um, you're not going to operate off this like, well, I got to go pray for 40 hours to make up for that one sin I did that was super bad and I knew it was bad. Right, it's not this like I'm clocking in, clock, clock in Christianity or checklist Christianity. Like, yeah. so I, I agree with you, and I and I love that. It's not getting super legalistic and allowing legalism to, because I, I think even at one point, like I got to a point where, and I'm all, I'm really big on holiness and righteousness, right? But I think I got to this point of like legalism or holiness and righteousness to the point where like I can even enjoy life, and I think that does breed legalism. So we're like, you just can't do nothing. Like you're just stuck, you're stick. And mm -hmm. there is a balance. Like if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, God wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. There's seasons of enduring and then seasons of enjoying. And that this is this will probably set someone free. It's just like knowing the difference between that and that balance. Because I believe some people, they can't even enjoy life because they're so churchy. And yeah, we, I know us, like even me, like I, 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 I broke free from that, thinking, oh, that, you know, and, and again, I'm not knocking righteousness or holiness, right? Making better decisions, healthier decisions, but to the point where, like, you just can't enjoy, like, and, and God wants you to enjoy, there's a level of discernment to know that. And yeah, I mean, life is nothing but a vapor. So we got to enjoy some parts of our lives. Yeah. And seasons. Yeah. Something on that as well is like, I feel like, I, I, yeah, I'm going to make that clear too, is like, I'm not advocating sin. That's not what I'm advocating at all. I believe if there's a sin in your life, is there something that you're doing, it must go immediately and mm -hmm. expeditiously 
devote yourself to saying, hey, Lord, I'm, a, I'm surrendering this to you and we got to get this out of here ASAP. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like through your process, God gives you grace Amen. for you to learn and for you to grow. And we can't just always beat ourselves up over every little thing that we do. Because if we do that, we're never going to get anywhere. Facts. We're just going to be like, well, you know, we're just disconnected. Like, what, like the reason that Jesus came was it just to to so you wouldn't go to hell is not really what it was because if you think about it the, ultimately what he did was he restored a connection he restored a relationship that was already present in the mm -hmm. garden right yeah. where they were in the presence of god and the sin is what caused them to be separated mm -hmm. and you see when jesus died and he and, he, and he's he's dying he's rising we see this earthquake happen as he 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 yields up his spirit Mm. And the veil in the temple is tore from top to bottom. Before you couldn't enter that 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 holy place, you couldn't go into the presence of God. Why? Because if you get in the presence of God and you unclean, like you're dying, mm. like because He's so holy. <laughs> but you see how Jesus came and He said, "I'm that that thing is cut off." Now there is now you are able to boldly approach the throne of grace. Wow. You can't boldly approach the throne of grace if you're thinking about, you know, your, what you're doing, right? But also, there's still a level of, yeah, you have to live right. Amen. Point number six is don't grieve him. Ephesians 4.30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. It's there for a reason. Because you can grieve him and God does not play about his spirit. Mm. We got to be, we got to be very careful as to what we're doing, right? And like I said, there's a there's a approach like if you're like lacking boldness to go and talk to God, it's probably because you're lacking righteousness, right? Wow. The righteous are as bold as lions, but the wicked flee when no man pursues. Wow. So yes, if you're having a problem with that, God, your relationship with God is the most important thing. You need to, whatever it is is causing you to be skittish and run off and you're not bold and you're like ashamed and all of that that has to go you have to make that a priority and say lord let's deal with this right now immediately wow. and it has to go then you would have confidence it's not that you are more righteous or you're more you're more deserving it's that mm -hmm. you are more confident in that mm -hmm. and also what we have in, in grieving the holy spirit is that it's not that when you make a mistake and you grieve him that he's leaving you, but he may have less trust in you. Mm. Relationships are all about trust. They're, they should be built on trust. If it's built on anything but trust, we might have a problem because you, you might be in a toxic relationship, you know. But um, it's, it, it's about trust. And if you do something, just think about this. If somebody is constantly doing things that that you don't like even though you tell they're clearly communicating to you that hey this is wrong i don't want you doing this and 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 you're doing things that is causing me to be grieved obviously my trust in being vulnerable to you is going to decrease and i'm going to draw back wow. it's not that i'm leaving it's not that he's leaving it's that his tr your, your the trust that you have between each other may be being weakened because mm. it's like hey you're out here operating in this in the flesh like i'm not gonna be like you just think about this like people who are going to hurt you you're obviously not going to be vulnerable with you're not going to be running to draw near to them because it's like well but that's why it's draw near to god and he will draw near to you you draw near to god and in turn you you turn away from sin that's why the people mm. get like Mixed up with repentance, right? A change of mind. They're like, well, repentance is a work. And if you preach repentance, then you're preaching works-based gospel. That's not how it works. It is changing your mind. But if you're changing your mind and you're changing to walking in the spirit instead of in the flesh, it's like God created darkness and light. And he determined that the light was good. And because he determined light was good, darkness is bad. Mm. Because... You are walking in the spirit because you're you're doing what is right, which you're turning and and focusing on God who is righteous, who is holy, and you're devoting yourself to him. The response is everything that's bad, you should naturally be turning away from it. Wow. And I feel like that's where we get like mixed up. Like we have to be aware that of our actions, right? Against God and know that He's not leaving you if you make a mistake and you don't like feel something. 
and, and he might be removing responsibilities from you. Maybe you are serving in a church and they say, hey, we're going to revoke that position because you did something or whatever the case may be. It might not be because he's leaving you and saying, well, I'm just I'm just leaving you and whatever happens, happens. No, it might be because you have to rebuild that trust because he if he can't trust you with little things, he's not going to trust you with bigger things. Wow. And if you have a bigger thing and he can't trust you, well, he got to, you know, you have to get worked on. And yeah. it's okay for him to like sometimes take things away because he needs to work on you. Wow. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You have, you know, you don't have to rush. Never rush. You rush whatever it is that God has for you, he's building you for it as you're going along. Like if you try to rush ahead of it, it's just going to crush you. Mm. The responsibility, the whatever it is that might come with it, it's going to crush you because God didn't build you to go through something that you're trying to do it yourself. Like you're, you are trying to build something, but like, hey, God's not building this, so it might not be stable. It might mm. not be strong. If God is trying to prepare you to go into a certain ministry, or a certain atmosphere, if He's not the one who prepares you to go there, and and this is where He wants you at, and you and you get there by yourself, how are you going to sustain? Mm. Because He didn't, you didn't let Him build you up. Mm. So I feel like this is like synonymous with like grieving the spirit. It's like, hey, we yeah. need to. We have to be conscious of our actions and that our actions have consequences. It doesn't mean he's leaving you, but it means that you need to get that right. You need to get yeah. that right and you need to build that trust. It's a relationship between two people. It's not transactional, right? We're just, we're, we're just doing this because, well, God, you're going to bless me. And, and, and God, God doesn't need nothing from you. God mm -hmm. has every, everything belongs to him. Mm -hmm. But we have to like, we just have to really humble ourselves and say, hey, Holy Spirit, I've done something wrong. Let's fix it. Let's change something. Let's change our mind. Let's change something. Let's do something. And it's really just that simple. It's not like a, you know, just, I think people overcomplicate spiritual things. Spiritual things are really simple. Are they easy? No, but mm -hmm. they're simple. It's, it's a basic truth that you can apply. You just read the word of God. And sometimes you might need help. Ask the Lord for help. Ask your leaders for help, whatever it is. But it's simple. You just have to acknowledge you've done something wrong yeah. and say, Lord, help me through this. And let's get it right and be committed to getting it right. Wow. Wow. Bro, you just preached a whole sermon right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, because like, I, I think people do struggle with like, what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? And you gave so many different angles. I really appreciate that because there's so many different... Um, angles of the revelation I, i'm just sure everyone because i was just like wow this is good this is good like these are really great because people don't just want spiritual they also want practical and you were able to mix that with a lot of the different points you put with what does it truly mean to grieve the holy spirit and what was that verse in ephesians you want to read that ephesians real quick? 4 4 30 it's first 30 let me see um yeah and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption amen that's such a word. That is such a word. Last point. Last point is you have to obey him. Mm. You have to. This is the distinction between a friend on the earth, an earthly friend, and God, your father who's in heaven, God, the Holy Spirit of God being your friend is with your friend. You know, you could you could joke. You could do whatever you want to do, but you have to realize God, he's God still. He's still yeah. God. And the difference between you being friends with a person versus you being friends with the Holy Spirit is obedience. Mm. There's a different relationship between you and him as in, yes, you are a servant and master, but there's also a friend relationship, but they're, they're together. They're not separate from each other. They're together. It's like, yes, you are my servant, but you're also my friend. Mm. You have to obey. If we notice in the scriptures, there's examples of people being called God's friends. So this is a biblical reality. We have Moses. It says that when he was talking to God, it was like a man talking with his best friend. There was also Abraham. Abraham is called a friend of God. We have the disciples. The disciples, Jesus calls them his friends. What did they all have in common to each other? They didn't just talk to God because you have a lot of people who do that. We talk to God. We pray to God every day. We, you know, and, and, and the thing is, the difference between that was not only did they talk to him, they listened to him and they obeyed him. Wow. Without obedience, you can't have friendship with God. Wow. With God. 
other people like you can just do whatever you want and and, and sure whatever they can they you can do whatever they want to your homeboy you know whatever it is that you be doing but with god you have to obey him yeah. otherwise he who says he loves god and does not obey his commandments he's a liar and the truth is not in, that's the word of god straight up this is not <laughs> me okay this is the word of god like yeah. you have to follow his commandments if you're really his friend, you really love him, you really care about him, you really believe that he's a person and you want to have friendship with him, you have to obey him even if it costs you something. Mm. There's a cost. There's a, there's, a, there's a price to pay as a disciple. And that's again, that's why they say obedience is greater than sacrifice. But I don't think a lot of people really understand like that obedience is greater than sacrifice because sacrifice is like lord i'm here obedience is like god i'm here i hear you i'll do it <laughs> you know there's like this level of it and it'll always remind me of like the the lazarus is, is a great story of like they heard jesus i'm there jesus I, i'm here with you i know he's been in there for four days it smells that's sacrifice obedience is when god tells you but lord he smell it smells didn't i tell you that if you would just obey that you that uh the father would be glorified Obedience is like, I'm going to remove the, stu the stone, um, not just be here and, and complain that he's already dead. So I think there's a, a level of knowing that in, in a practical biblical standpoint is like obedience is like when God gives you that instruction, you have to obey. You just have to obey. And we can go so much into that, like the whole like, well, how do I know this is from God? I think that would be like a good topic is like, how do I know this is from God? That'd be a great topic. If you guys want that topic, let us know. But I, I think we're going to really uh, share another episode on that because that's a whole word on like, is this from God? Is this from the Holy Spirit? How do I know? But today we were really talking about breaking down a lot of aspects that hinder us from actually hearing God, trusting God, obeying God, and wanting to pursue God. It's just breaking down all those things, not getting too religious, not getting too legalistic, uh, knowing that it like you don't always have to feel good to take action it's a lot of things that we need to break these walls down that we've built these jericho walls so we can rebuild jerusalem in our life right what what god really wants to build so that's a lot of stuff i was just hearing today um any last things you want to share as we close out and then i'm gonna have you pray bro yeah do you want me to like just run them back one more time just to like just mm -hmm. quick okay yeah, so yeah. the seven keys on friendship with the holy spirit one you must be born again Two, acknowledge that he is a person and treat him as such. Three, acknowledge that he is already with you. Four, believe the word even when you don't feel anything. Five, don't be legalistic in your approach. Six, don't grieve him. Seven, obey him. Bars. Bars. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go ahead. You want let, Let's close out in prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Just thank you for this podcast, Lord. Thank you for all the people who are watching and listening in, Lord. We just pray right now that you just impart your Holy Spirit upon them, that you would just give them fresh revelation, Lord, that you would pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, as you say in your word, Lord, that you would just begin to minister each and to every each and every one of them as they're listening to this message allow them to receive allow them to be able to uh, re retain this information be able to apply it in a practical manner lord and we just thank you lord that you have instructed us in our in your word what to do you have given us everything that we already need in your word lord and we just pray that you just allow each and every one of us our eyes to be open as to how to apply your word, how to believe in your word, even when our circumstances don't look like what we want it to look like. But God, we know that you are faithful, you are true, and we just thank you for that. I just pray right now that everyone watching here would just have a surrendered heart to the Lord, a surrendered heart to the Holy Spirit, that whatever it is that he may speak, even if it's challenging, even if it's hard, even if it's uncomfortable, that they would be willing and surrender to him to do it so that you would be glorified, so that generations would be set free from the words that you have put in their mouth. I just pray right now, Lord, that every spiritual gift that is working in every individual here would just be stirred up in Jesus' name, that it would be working for your glory, for your purposes, and that they would not be ashamed to use what you have already put in them, that they would not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit, but they would walk in boldness and confidence in the Word of God and in the gifts that you have given them. 
all this we say in your mighty and matchless name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen.